Hello and welcome everyone to Science Era. Today we'll be uh, covering chapter number 3 from Business Statistics, 7th edition, which is Numerical Descriptive Measures. Uh, I believe this video will be useful for UNISA students who are doing STA 1510 module. So let's begin. In this chapter, we will learn about describing the properties of central tendency, variation and shape in numerical data. We will know how to construct and interpret a box plot diagram. Then we will discuss about computing descriptive summary measures for a population. In the last video, we discussed about the descriptive summary measures for the uh, sample. Uh, lastly, we'll look at how to calculate the covariance and coefficient of correlation. Before we begin the chapter, we need to understand some key definitions. Uh, first, we have to look at the central tendency. Central tendency is the extent to which variable of numerical uh, uh, extent to which the values of a numerical variable groups around a typical or a central value. Second, what is variation? It is the amount of dispersion or, scat or, or scattering away from the central value. Mm -hmm. How data is uh, scattered away from the central value, which is mean. And lastly, the shape. Shape is the pattern of distribution of values from the lowest value to the highest. We begin with the measures of central tendency. Uh, uh, the first measure of central tendency is the mean. We calculate mean by, the, uh, by dividing the sum of values by number of values. So here you can see the formula for uh, calculating the mean. Remember, the mean is affected by the extreme values, which is also known as outliers. So uh, to calculate mean, you write this formula first, then you sum up all the values they have given you, for example, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 to the nth value. And here n is the number of values. You divide by the number of values. Next, numerical descriptive measure for a population. Pre previously, we discussed about a sample, how, how uh, a descriptive statistics is used to describe a sample. Now we now we will be looking at the sum uh, uh, the population. Summary measures for describing a population is called parameters. Three parameters for uh, are important in order to describe the population, which are population mean, variance, and standard deviation. Um, on this slide, you can see uh, the numerical descriptive measure for a population. How do you calculate mean for the population? This symbol here is known as rho, R-H-O. It is pronounced as rho. The population mean is the sum of values in the population divided by the population. So um, just like how you calculate normal mean, you add up all the values which is given in the population and the and then divide divide by the total number of population or the or also known as population size second measure of central tendency is median median in order to calculate median we first need to organize or arrange data in numerical order begin with the lowest value to the highest value so there are two rules for it. For the odd numbers, like for example, here in the first example, we have seven digits overall. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this is odd. In order to calculate the median for odd, we look at the central value, which is six or the middle number. And then next example we have of even numbers here we know that the data are of eight total numbers which is an even value so what do you uh, what do you do when you have even numbers of data you take two central 
num uh, two central or middle values and you take out the average for that so in this case we have four and five so we plus we add them four plus five which is nine and then we divide by two to calculate the average which is 4.5 remember it uh, the median is less sensitive than mean to the extreme values next locating the median in order to locate median we can use the simple formula n plus 1 over 2 remember this does not give you the value of the median this only gives you the position so if I get answer as 6 which means that sixth position whatever number I have on the sixth position is the median so n is the number of values and uh, plus 1 and then divide by 2 will get the position in ordered data next we have mode mode is also a measure of central tendency mode is the value that occur most it is not affected by extreme values we can use uh, we can use it in either numerical or categorical data here i have two examples example 1 is with no mode and example 2 is mode with mode there may be no mode in data because if numbers or values does not occur often there is no mode so there is no repeating value in example 1 but in example 2 you can see that 3 I got 3 in the data 3 times so 3 is the mode because it is the value that occur most often next to review the measure of central tendency I have this example here with house of price I got five house of prices in order and the sum of the house of prices this in order to calculate mean which is sum of total number divided by the number of data so I have I got five data and the sum sum total is this so this divided by 5 will give you $600,000 as a mean median is the middle value which divide 50% above and 50% below so in this case 5 digits right 1 2 3 and 1 2 3 so 300,000 is the median value value which is in the center mode is the data that occurs most frequent most frequent value so in this data we can see of five digits we can see that hundred thousand repeats two times only hundred thousand is repeating itself no other figure is repeating so hundred thousand is mode next how do you know which measure to choose we choose mean we choose uh, we generally choose mean unless we uh, unless extreme values exist if you have outliers in the data you cannot choose mean because mean is sensitive to extreme values we chose median when we have uh, extreme values because median is less sensitive for example median home price may be reported for a region because it is less sensi sensitive to the outlier in some situation we can choose both mean and median okay so there are three uh, this is the summary table for measure of central tendency we know that there are three measures mean median and mode mode is the most frequent score median is median uh, median is the middle number and mean is the average of data next next we look at the shape of distribution we can see the shape of uh, we, uh, two useful shape uh, related to statistics are skewness and kurtosis. Skewness measures the extent to which data is spread out. The data values are not symmetrical. And kurtosis is, uh, uh, kurtosis is affected by the peakedness of the curve of distribution. We look at the peak, how sharply the curve rises. So, Skewness can be of two types. Skewness is defined as the measure the extent to which data is not symmetrical. Skewness can either be positive or negative. 
you can see from the graph when skewness when the graph is positively skewed we see that median is greater than mean and when the graph is negatively skewed we see that median is less than mean next we have measures of variation variation can be measured by four ways calculating range calculating variance standard deviation and lastly coefficient of variation so let's look at the range range is the simplest measure of variation first uh, in order to calculate range you first sort out all the values from low to high numbers and then subtract the lowest value from the highest value and you will get the range range can be misleading sometimes there are two reasons why range can be misleading firstly it does not count for how the data are distributed and secondly it is sensitive to outliers next measure of variation sample variation first we look at the sample variation it is the average of square deviation of the value from the mean so we subtract the value from the mean we subtract mean from the value and then square it and divide the figure by n minus 1 where n is the sample size for the sample variance uh, the symbol is s squared next the sample standard deviation it is also the it is also one of the measure of variation it is mostly used it shows that vary it shows the variation about the mean is the square root of the variance when you calculate square, uh, variance and square it you get the standard deviation remember uh, uh, variation is s squared so calculate the square root take out the square root of the data or the figure you will get the standard deviation next how do you calculate standard deviation you have some figures uh, you have some data given and then they ask you to calculate standard deviation there are few steps you need to follow to calculate standard deviation firstly you need to compute the difference between each value and the mean then you square each difference and add the square differences then after you add the square differences you divide this by the total number n minus 1 where n is the number of values to get the sample variation when you have the sample variance you square root the sample variance to get the standard deviation here is an example of calculating standard deviation you see they have given you sample data and they have tell uh, they told you that the number of values are 8 n equals 8 and the mean is 16 so first you subtract mean from the number and then you square them and then you add them divided by n minus 1 where n is the number of value in this case they told you that number of value is 8 so 8 minus 1 for this data you get standard deviation as 4.31 next when they have given you graph and they ask you to tell them if the standard deviation is large or small by looking at data you can see if the data is more spread out and the slope is gentle they have large standard deviation here l stand for large and if the data is not spread out and the peak is high and slope is steep the they have smaller standard deviation here s stand for small standard deviation next is a numerical descriptive measure for population for, uh, for population calculating variance we use sigma squared as a symbol for calculating variance in population same as you did uh, as, uh, the formula is same as you did for the uh, sample but only the symbol changes average of square deviation of value from the mean is variance.
next is standard deviation it is uh, for the population they have the same formula also for the population for the standard deviation you calculate standard deviation using the same method we discussed uh, we discussed earlier but the only the difference is symbol symbol is sigma uh, this table show a little summary for the uh, for the difference in symbols of uh, population parameter and symbol statistics you see for the mean calculating pop, uh, calculating population parameters mean you use a symbol row and for sample you use x bar for variance in population you use sigma squared while in sample you uh, use s squared for standard deviation you use sigma and for sample statistics you use s okay some of the characteristics we need to know for measuring uh, variation are there are four characteristics first the more the data are spread out in the, uh, when measuring vari variation you see that the, when more data is spread out range is greater variation var variance and standard deviation is greater when data are more concentrated the the variance range and standard deviation is small if all the uh, values are same if uh, all the numbers or values are same there is no uh, no variation if there is no variation all the measure will be zero and remember standard uh, measure of variation is never a negative measure it is always either positive or zero Lastly, we looked at the measure of variation, the coefficient of variation. It measures the relative variation. It is always described in percentage. It shows variation relative to the mean. It can be used to compare the variability of two or more set of data measured in the different units. Here you have the formula for coefficient of variation. C represents for coefficient v is variation equal s over x bar s is the s is the standard deviation while x bar is mean and you times it by 100 here you can see the comparison of uh, coefficient of variation between stock a and stock d you see that both stock have same devi standard deviation but stock b is less variable relative to its price okay next we have quartile measures quartile split data into four segment each segment for a uh, four segment with an equal number of value per segment so it divides uh, uh, data into four 25 percent uh, 25 percent each segment so first quartile Q1, first quartile is known as Q1, is the value for which 25% of observation are smaller and 75% are larger. For Q2, also known as median, 50% observation are smaller and 50% are larger. So Q, uh, Q2 or quartile 2 divides data into half. And Q3. Only 25% of observation are greater than the third quartile. Next, we have quartile measures, locating quartiles. How do you locate quartile? Find a quartile by determining the value in appropriate position in the ranked data. These are the formula for calculating first quartile position. Q1 equals n plus 1 over 4. Q2 equals n plus 1 over 2. And third coil is uh, the third quartile position is Q3 equals 3 times n plus 1 over 4 ranked value, where n is the number of observed values. Some, some calculation rules are when calculating the rank position use the following rules 
If the result is whole number, then it is a ranked position to use. If the result is fractional half, then average the two corresponding data values. If the result is not a whole number or a fractional half, then round the result to the nearest integer to find the ranked position. Here you see how do you locate quartiles. For the quartile 1, when number n equals 9, you calculate the quartile 1 position, 9 plus 1 over 4. So it is 2.5 position of the ranked, ranked data. So use the value halfway between 2, second and third value. So here in the data, second value is 12 and third value is 13. So we need to find the uh, value which is halfway between 12 and 13 which is 12.5. Uh, quartile 2 median is the measure of central tendency while quartile 1 and quartile 2 are non-central location. Here is the example of uh, uh, calculating the quartiles. They have given you the uh, dat a sample data and told you that number of the values in the data are 9. So uh, in order to calculate the position of Q1, Q2 and Q3, you use the same formula n plus 1 over 4. For the quartile 1, they said 2.5 position. So you round it off to second position and third position, the, uh, the, uh, the number uh, between second and third position. So between 12 and 13 is 12.5. The median is 16. And the quartile 3 in this case is 19.5. Next we have interquartile range. Interquartile range in order to calculate interquartile range, we, uh, we subtract Q3 minus Q1. So we subtract lower quartile from the upper quartile uh, to calculate the quartile range. Uh, IQR covers the 50% of data. It also measures the variability which is not influenced by outliers. So in this case, how do you calculate the interquartile range? First, you find out Q1, Q2, and Q3. Then you subtract Q1 from Q3. And you get 10.16 as the interquartile range. Uh, the five number summary. To calculate five number summary, we have to look at uh, five things. We first need to know what is the lowest value in the data, what is the highest value in the data, and then we have to calculate quartiles, Q1, lower quartile, Q2, median, and Q3, upper quartile. This table shows the summary of, five, uh, summary of uh, distribution and shape of five numbers how do you how do you look at the how do you read the graph when it is left skewed what information they give you so for the left skewed the distance between median and smallest number is always greater than the uh, distance between largest number and the median uh, it is left skewed when distance between median and smallest number and uh, distance between largest number and medium is equal, the graph is symmetrical. When median and a distance between median and the smallest number is less than the distance between largest number and median, it is a right skewed graph. Then for the quartile uh, distance between quartile 1 and the smallest number, it is also greater than the uh, distance between largest number and quartile 3. Median uh, distance between median and quartile 1 is also greater than distance between quartile 3 and median. 
these are all the characteristics of left skewed graph for the symmetrical distance between median and smallest number largest number and medium quartile 1 and smallest number largest number and quartile 3 is all the distances are same they are symmetrical for the right skewed graphs distance between quartile 1 and smallest number is less than the distance between largest number and quartile 3 median uh, the distance between medium and the quartile 1 is less than the distance between quartile 3 and median next uh, we can show the five number summary using the box and plot diagram box and plot is a graphical display of that of the data based on the five number summary so when you draw a box and uh, a box and plot diagram you see the first line represent the lowest value then you draw a line on the quartile one which is uh, the lower quartile then quartile two quartile three and another tail at the right hand side represent the highest value here you can see a diagram uh, diagrammatic form of how the distribution uh, shape and the box plot are uh, represented for the left skewed graph symmetrical graph and right skewed graph this is the box and whisker or box plot diagram and these are the graph you see here distance between q2 and q3 is smaller in left skewed graph uh, while distance between q2 and q3 is large in right skewed graph locating extreme outliers also known as z score z score is one of the way to compute the outliers uh, location it is studied in detail in chapter number six. To compute the set score of a data value, subtract the mean and divide by standard deviation. The Z score is the number of standard deviation a data value is from the mean. The data value is considered an extreme outlier. If, it, if its Z score is less than 3.0 or greater than 3, the larger the absolute value of the z score the farther the data value is from the mean you can calculate the z score by the following formula z equals x minus x bar over s where x represent the data value x bar represent the sample mean and s is a sample standard deviation Here is an example of locating Z score. Suppose that the mean of math SAT score is 490 with a standard deviation of 100. Compute Z score for a test score 620. So we know the X value is 620. X bar mean is 490 for the given data and the standard deviation they said is 100. So we subtract mean from the test score 620 and then divide it by 100 which will give you 1.3 as a standard deviation 1.3 standard deviation is above the mean and would not be considered an outlier so this is not an outlier another way uh, to locate the outlier is empirical rule it is also studied in chapter 6 Empirical rule approximates the variation of data in a bell-shaped distribution. Approximately 68% of the data in a bell-shaped distribution is within one standard deviation of mean. So here you can see the empirical rule diagram. Okay, so discussing the empirical rule. Approximately 95% of data in a bell-shaped distribution lies within the two standard deviation of mean. 99.7% of the data in bell-shaped distribution lies between three standard deviation of mean.
using the empirical rule. This is an example of using empirical rule. Suppose that the variable math set score is bell shaped with a mean of 500 and the standard deviation is 90. So we need to calculate the empirical rule. Uh, sorry, we need to apply the empirical rule. We know that 68% of all the test scored lied between uh, one standard deviation. So we said 500 plus minus 90. So the data is between 410 and 590. Approximately 95% of the all test scored lie between 320 and 680. So 95% data lies between two standard deviations. So 90 plus 90, 180. So the data will be 500 plus minus 980. And for 99.7%, the data will be plus minus 270 of 500. Thank you so much. This was all for chapter number 3, which was numerical descriptive measures. If you like my video, please subscribe, like and share. For the PDF notes, contact the given number. Thank you.